Part three, planes in space. More examples. The example we're dealing with right now, find an equation of the plane that contains the three points. We have a plane right here. We've got three different points. Okay. This particular plane has the equation of the form ax plus by plus cz plus d is equal to zero. That being the case, if you plugged in each point, because they are on the plane, the equation should be satisfied. When you do that, for point one, two, three, when you plug it in, the one, two, three represents the variables x, y, z. If you do that, you get 1a, 2b, 3c, plus d is equal to 0. When you plug in point 0, 1, 2, we get 1b plus 2c plus d is equal to 0. When you plug in point 1, 0, 1, we end up with a plus c plus d is equal to 0. Well, we have three equations and one unknown. So d could be anything, any integer. And then the unknown's abc will adjust its value according to that. So what we're going to do is, given this, we're going to let d is equal to negative 6. When you do that, what you will end up with is abc is equal to 0, negative 6, 6. So you could conclude that the equation will be negative 6y plus 6z is equal to, because I put d equal to negative 6, if you reduce that further, that will be y minus z plus 1 is equal to 0. And that right there will be the solution. But if you let, let's say, for example, d is equal to negative 1, what you'll find is that abc will come out to 0, negative 1, 1. And that will yield, once again, um, minus y plus z minus 1 equal to 0, and that is essentially the same equation that you had above. So the question here is, how do I solve for this? You can solve this by simple system of equations. Sorry, this is a systems system of equations. Uh, we could do this by a lot of substitution and plug and chug. Or we could use Kramer's rule. Or we could use uh, Gaussian augmented matrix, right? Using Gaussian elimination. You have all those options, and uh, you need to go back and review those methods. But that's how you would do this particular problem. On to our second example. Find the point where the line R, vector R, intersects the plane Q. The main idea is here, guys, is that if you have plane Q, there is a line vector equation that goes through that. At this point, this particular point occupies the plane and the line at the same time. That's why it's an intersection. Because they occupy both, they must satisfy both. So what we do is this vector equation written in a component form. This is how the, uh, the value of the x is governed depending on t. This is how the y is governed. And this is why how the z is governed. Uh, z is just 1 regardless. So what that means x, y, and z. So we just plug those values in here. When you do that, 
having substituted the values for x, y, z components, we end up with 2t plus 2 minus t minus 3. Working through the equation, we would get that t is equal to 2. So what that basically means is that when t is equal to 2, after substituting for the value t equal to 2, we get the coordinate value 4, 0, 1. In this example, find the point where the line vector r intersects the plane q. Similar to the problem that we did earlier, um, this right here represents the x value, y value, and z value depending on time t. That being the case, we plug that into this equation, which will yield us, after I plug in the coordinates for x, y, and z, this is what I get, and when you go work through that, the 2t and the uh, negative t and the t here cancels out, what we end up with is 2 is equal to 0, and we know that can't be true, which means that there is no value t such that it will, the line will intersect the plane. Well, of course, if the line doesn't intersect the plane, then it has to be parallel to the plane. No intersection. Well, rather than being satisfied with this result, let's just look at it again. What we have basically here is, is that here's a plane which has x minus y plus z equal to 0. What that literally means is that it is normal to the normal vector that is 1, negative 1, 1. And what we have here is what, guys? A line. And we're claiming that it is parallel. But if, if that's parallel, this r right here, which is uh, 3, 1, 0, plus t times the negative 2, 1, and 3. And you can see from the diagram that if r and the plane q is parallel, then the vector r and vector n should be perpendicular. Is it? Okay. Then you do the dot product. So I wrote down the dot product for the vector n and r. And when you apply the dot product, that gives you 2, sorry, negative 2, minus 1, plus 3, and that indeed is equal to 0. And that's been verified. And if you get confused, be sure to look at this particular graph. They're very, uh, that illustration, it's very, very helpful.